Welcome to Shepard Sources' Guide to the Hardcore Charge Bolt Frozen Orb Sorceress for Season 4 of Diablo 4. Uh, this build can pretty much do everything with a single button press. Uh, but you can also mix in the Unstable Currents and Lightning Spear off cooldown to keep things interesting. Uh, casting Charge Bolts will also proc Frozen Orb and set everything burning. With the high chance to stun from gear and your Lightning Spear, your unique helm is constantly pulling groups together. You're getting bonus off of damage to frozen, damage to chilled, damage to stunned, damage to slowed, as well as the benefit of not taking damage from crowd controlled enemies who can't do anything. The charge bolts track and pierce through enemies causing massive amounts of electrical novas to decimate groups. This is really a one button does everything build if you want it to be, but can also be more. Let's get into the uh, skills first. You can see my skill bar. Uh, our primary is Firebolt. We don't really use it much. Uh, it's rarely used. The majority of the time you're going to be casting Charge Bolt uh, with a combination of Lightning Stun Chance, Stun Tempering, Frozen Tempering, Firebolt Enchant causing burning to all enemies. Every other Charge Bolt casts a Frozen Orb which chills, freezes, and causes vulnerability. As you can see, <laughs> again, one button. Charge Bolts does everything. Uh, teleport and Flame Shield, of course, for if you run into issues. Uh, Lightning Spear is a quick way to stun a lot of enemies, and it works well with the Shared Misery perk on the boots to spread stun to all nearby enemies. On top of that, it makes everything vulnerable, and when it stuns an Elite, God Slayer Crown will proc every 12 seconds, pulling enemies into a nice ball of death for the Charge Bolts Nova to do tons of AoE damage. Uh, I'm going to go through everything, the skill tree, my Paragon points, and my gear. Uh, check out Mobilytics. It's all uploaded on there. Uh, and if you got to this video from Mobilytics, here we go. Let's get into it. For our enchantments, we are using Firebolt Enchantment. Direct damage from skills applies up to an additional 23% burning damage over 8 seconds. This is going to proc all of our passives and our Paragon board that increase our damage, increase our damage reduction uh, when enemies are on fire. And on top of that, we're using the Frozen Orb enchantment, right? Uh, whenever you cast a non-basic skill, you have a 30% chance to launch a Frozen Orb at a nearby enemy. This is chilling, this is freezing, and this is making everything vulnerable because we went to, we put three points into this to get the uh, Greater Frozen Orb enchantment. So uh, Explosion has 40% chance to make all enemies hit vulnerable for 3 seconds. This is huge, especially on boss fights, where the you know initial vulnerability from your charged lightning spear is going to wear off. Well, now you have frozen orbs going at this boss, continually making it vulnerable. So Firebolt and Enhanced Firebolt. First two points, you have to take it. It's primarily taken for the enchant. Uh, you will use this sparingly when bossing to try and remain above 100 mana for elementalist aspect as I haven't figured out a good solution to our mana issues when only setting one enemy on fire and also the limited crowd control mana generated from aspect of the umbral when there's only one enemy on the screen. Typically there's hordes of enemies and mana is not an issue. Um, move on down to our core skills and you can see even though it's not on our bar we are taking some points in Frozen Orb up to Greater Frozen Orb here. Uh, frozen Orb's explosion has a 40% chance to make all enemies hit vulnerable for 3 seconds. And Frozen enemies are always made vulnerable. This stacks with our tempering to make enemies frozen. This doesn't actually get put on our bar. Like I said, it's just there for the enchant to keep vulnerable up on enemies. Primarily boss fights as enemies die immediately. Uh, then we go over to Charge Bolt. Obviously, you know, that is our primary core skill. I have now specced into Greater Charge Bolts for a little bit more damage because we're starting some pit runs. Um, but the build on Mobilytics has Destructive Charge Bolts. Uh, charge Bolts reduce their damage dealt by 25% for 3 seconds. This is a choice for you if you want more survivability. If you're doing hardcore like I am, you might want to at least level using Destructive Charge Bolts. And then you can go into uh, Greater Charge Bolts right after that. Next up, our defensive skills, right? Flame Shield is our emergency button. Unstoppable, immune, and generate 50% of your missing health. Then there is Teleport. It's just a great all-around skill that also has Unstoppable. Uh, provides us some massive damage reduction upon use with Shimmering Teleport. 
We put only one point into the elemental attunement here. Uh, as it does have a 10 second cooldown, I feel that increasing the chance for it to happen isn't very beneficial when it can only happen once every 10 seconds. Going down here to our conjuration skills, right? Lightning spear, it's huge. It flies around. It hits everything. Uh, critically striking, stunning, uh, which procs shocking impact to add a whopping 120% lightning damage every time it stuns. We'll go down to uh, shocking impact right here. So right now, 27k damage. You can definitely boost that up. Our gear is not great. There's a few greater affixes on it. We have a couple uniques. Just what we found to kind of throw the build together. And it still works great. I mean, we just did a pit 25 and it runs through everything. Uh, here we take align the elements just to get to uh, protection and mana shield. Mana shield is huge, although 100 mana sounds like a lot. Uh, we're constantly casting charge bolts. So that 24% damage reduction for five seconds is almost always on. And this is just to have the barrier up. Um, we have some bonuses for having a barrier up and typically everything CC'd and we don't take more than 3k damage in three seconds. Uh, if you are, then you know you might consider putting some more points into this. Uh, but the in increase to 20% really isn't worth two, two more points in my opinion. And of course we take the lucky hit chance. So much revolves all around lucky hit with this build. Especially with our tempering, lucky hit to, to stun, lucky hit to uh, freeze. It it all works with this build. Headed down here, mastery skills. You know, we really only take the devouring blaze passive. That's a huge thirty percent multiplier uh, because all enemies are burning and all of them are crowd controlled. Right, we're constantly throwing out uh, frozen orbs with our casts, and everything's at least chilled and slowed. So that's always on. Um, we already talked about shocking impact. We go down to our ultimate skills here. We pick fiery surge, three out of three. You know, killing a burning enemy increases your mana rege regeneration by 45%. This coupled with our um, frigid breeze, every lucky hit, there's a lucky hit. Cold damage against vulnerable enemies has up to 20% chance to generate 10 mana. Uh, it's, that's huge. Um, then hoarfrost, you know, we're keeping enemies chilled. 9% uh, increased damage to chilled enemies and 18% increased damage to frozen enemies. It's just, just an increase in damage. And, you know, you could think about losing some points elsewhere to get, uh, let's see, this glass cannon. But I'm not taking it just because of the increase in damage we're taking. We're trying to push pit. And a big thing is taking too much damage. Oh, we don't want to do that, right? Uh, coming down here, we are also taking warmth. Huge sustain, right, for our health. We take chip damage, lots of chip damage, but I don't even have to use potions, hardly any in this build because this is just regenerating our health. Um, if we go here, we are taking unstable currents and it's really only for this second buff here, only two points because we want that attack speed to be 25%. That's just a huge boost to our damage, especially when we are stunning a boss. Bosses are gonna get stunned. Uh, the butcher is probably one of the hardest people to stun in this game monsters to stun and we, we stun it multiple times while we're fighting them um then electrocution right 15 percent less damage from enemies after being critically struck by uh shock skills this is almost always on we're always critical striking and we're going with uh veer's mastery here right close enemies take 15 percent increased damage from your shock skills uh, 20 percent less from you this is almost always at the next level because we're <laughs> critical striking everything uh these bonuses are 20 and 25 percent uh respectively for three seconds with that going on our skills let's move on to our paragon all right let's go through the boards real quick it's uh pretty easy here uh going with the starter board we're getting the glyph socket uh flame feeder you know increased damage to burning enemies and then 10 percent multiplicative damage to uh increased damage to burning enemies here uh we did get both rare nodes on the bottom as well as the maximum life and we try to grab max life through all of our boards here because it's really important especially pushing pits you can get one shot so easily on those bosses uh you got to keep that life up uh coming up to our first board here we're picking elemental summoner nothing in here really increases our damage too much uh except for Swift Conjurer, that 5% attack speed is huge. This is a big rare node. Um, and I wanted to make sure I was able to get the bonus 
for an additional 2.5% attack speed. This uh, willpower and dex uh, increase mana, maximum life. Uh, increased mana is perfect because we are using the elementalist aspect, and that increases your critical strike by quite a bit as long as you're casting your core skills above 100 mana. And so we're grabbing all these plus manas. And instead of going straight to the next board, we're passing through uh, Conjurer here, which isn't so important, right? We don't really care about Conjuration damage, uh, but we wanted to grab this Glyph Node and get control, you know, dealing more damage to slowed and chilled enemies or increased damage to stunned and frozen enemies. It's everything's chilled or everything's frozen, everything's stunned. We're just doing lots of extra damage here. And we did grab this uh, Erudite for resistance to all elements, more intelligence, just it was, it was a couple extra points and we wanted to come up here and get these dexterity notes anyways. Um, so it was worth it. Moving on to our next board here, uh, we did come up to uh, Burning Instinct here. Uh, this board was really just taken for all these rare nodes that increase um, damage reduction to burning enemies up to 20 percent here and then uh, damage to burning enemies over here damage uh, reduction from elites and we get the kindling 20 percent more damage to burning enemies damage to elites this is just easy damage that we're adding with these boards because everything's on fire because we're using that firebolt enchant coming up here uh, Keeper of the Flames, 10% damage reduction from burning enemies. It's it's just more damage reduction, more damage. These are all great notes, um, and I'd rather spend a few extra points. Instead of getting a 7th board and a 7th glyph, uh, I'd rather get a few extra points to get this damage reduction over here and this extra glyph over here. Uh, coming down to our next board, it is the Enchantment Master, right? So we're coming here mainly for the glyph, 20% uh, non-physical damage, and the uh, resistance to all elements, you know, not as important, but we're still trying to hit that 70% max. And if you'll see in the gear when we get to it, I still had to use some a uh, couple diamonds to hit that 70% max. Um, in this glyph socket, we're using territorial. You gain 15% damage reduction against close enemies and increased damage to close targets. Uh, we're always up in targets' faces because we're casting charge bolts and teleporting to the next group. Uh, it, it's just it, it all works together here next board we're gonna take is the uh, ceaseless conduit right we're not taking the legendary node again uh, we're just coming in here to you know grab this rare node not that important what's important is this glyph uh, destruction increased critical strike damage uh, the enemy takes from you up to 12% huge huge damage increase we're shooting right through to this last board which is pretty important uh, we want to grab this Static Surge. This is helping with our mana. And if you want to do these boards in a different order, it might work out. Um, this Elemental Balance and Erudite, this board was kind of the last one where we can hit Dex and Willpower. Um, and, and that's kind of why I chose the placements of these boards. Because these Dex and Willpower nodes, I wanted to make sure that uh, I hit it. 20% damage of bonus to enemies and this reduction to enemies with the willpower so these two um this third one you know we start not meeting the requirements but it's really not that big of a deal you know we have so much lightning resistance anyways we don't need to hit that uh we did grab this one because of the lightning damage uh but the the big nodes we wanted to hit here is really uh paralyzing 30 percent damage to stun enemies and maximum mana and then the magic node for maximum mana we grabbed our uh, mana regeneration, restores 10% of your mana, uh, makes enemies vulnerable, and then restorative, more maximum life here, right? Uh, we didn't really care about hitting the willpower on this. We don't really use healing potions, to be honest, uh, but we do have this more maximum life here. It's adding that multiplayer, and our last glyph is exploit. For that increased vulnerable damage to enemies, uh, we have vulnerable from charged lightning spear, and we have vulnerable from our frozen nova right so that that's all working for us um let's move on to our gear lost our connection there but we're back uh let's talk about the gear real quick god slayer crown is you know this kind of makes the build a one button wonder you can literally just press 
charge bolt and things will get stunned things will get frozen things will get pulled into little balls of death see here when you stun freeze or immobilize an elite enemy or damage a boss it pulls in nearby enemies and you deal 42 percent increased damage to them for three seconds uh ideally this would be 925 with more greater affixes and 60 percent increased damage we just haven't found it yet but we have the most important greater affix maximum life uh, coming down here, you know, this amulet, I put piercing static on the amulet as piercing is 100% required for this build. And the amulet lowers the damage reduction of that aspect. So you see here, charge bolts pierce, but deal 28% less damage to targets hit after the first. That's huge. We have maximum life, you know, critical strike chance and resource cost reduction. All of our pieces that can roll it, we're going to be rolling maximum life for our first temper. And down here, uh, resource cost reduction for our second temper. Going on to our rings, Talrasha's Iridescent Loop. Uh, our best roll of this, we've found a couple 925s of it, but our 800 item power has just been the highest roll with everything. You know, for each type of element damage you deal, you gain increased damage up to 54% here. It can go up to 60%. Uh, with one button press, charge bolts going out burning enemies it's casting a uh, frozen orb chilling enemies so ice we're always going to have three different um elements and you could if you didn't want to run the staff of lamb essen uh i kind of think you should these charge bolts you get plus six to charge bolts right off the bat without mastering it very well and then you have uh charge bolts have a 50 to 60 percent chance to be attracted to enemies and last 300 percent longer it's just traveling all over the battlefield hitting all the enemies uh you really want it to be attracted that way you get multiple bolts to hit the same enemy causing uh novas those electrical novas those surges are what really cause a lot of damage in this build uh, our last ring we're running loop of the umbral you know that restore five of your primary resource it can go up to six when you crowd control an enemy it just <laughs> whenever we're going against mobs of enemies we always have above 100 mana which feeds into our aspect here uh elementalist you know core skills cast at above 100 mana gain 34 percent or 40 percent if you get a max roll increased critical strike chance that's just huge you're always critting uh, you're always critting with your uh, lightning spear. You're critting with your uh, charge bolts. You're getting those stuns. It just everything works together really well uh, with this build. Um, for the tempers on the ring, you no know, shock, critical strike chance, and then resource generation here. That's huge. And you always want to roll max life. Uh, we have intelligence and attack speed. Attack speed where you can get it. Um, that's one that it's kind of hard to get on the gear. I kind of wish I had it on my, uh, amulet here, but just haven't gotten that lucky yet. Uh, I could re-roll something. I could re-roll the resource cost reduction and I may end up doing that, uh, because attack speed is just a huge damage boost here. Let's go back over to the armor. You know, Archon armor of the protector. We have maximum barrier here. Uh, every 30 seconds, whenever you damage an elite, you gain a barrier for 10,000 damage. That's, that's big right that uh we're keeping barriers up all the time um we have our greater affix on the maximum life you want if you only get one greater affix on all your armors you want it to be on maximum life especially for trying to push pits you need as much health as you can as you can see here we have almost 30k life uh without our potions without our incense without any additional buffs um we already took a look at the element elementalist runic gloves here but uh Max life, intelligence, critical strike damage, right? For our temperings, we have a uh, lucky hit chance for a chance to stun. Uh, that's one thing I didn't go over here. On this one, you know, maximum life, lucky hit chance, chance to freeze. And then we have chance to stun on our pants, chance to freeze on our boots. You kind of see <laughs> what we're going for here, right? Stunning, chilling everything. It's just feeding into the rest of our build. Here we have max life, max life tempering on everything uh, i really wish max life would have a greater affix haven't found it yet uh 80 intelligence and we're rolling armor rolling armor on the chest and the uh pants and uh we didn't roll it on the boots and i'm thinking about rolling the movement speed but we do lack movement speed too uh we are just below the armor cap uh we're at 9106 and that's why i actually have a uh, skull in my ring um, and then I have diamonds in the rest so that I hit that 70% resistance.
Uh, finally, you know, staff of lamb here. It's it's pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> the only reason why I have a twenty percent vulnerable strike and uh, twenty five percent critical strike gem, I mixed them together, is because I didn't have enough <laughs> chip gems to do one or the other. Uh, pick one or the other, uh, whichever in your stats has the less. Since this is additive damage, that's the one you want to pick. Uh, let me explain here. So we'll go to we'll look at my vulnerable damage and my crit strike. So crit strike damage, 333. That's pretty big. Vulnerable damage, 86. That's low. So a 20% increase additive to my vulnerable damage is going to be a lot more than 25% increase to my critical strike damage. So as soon as I can, I'm going to want to replace that critical strike damage gem with vulnerable damage. I'm going to be boosting my vulnerable damage because it's my lowest stat. That's kind of how you want to do the additives. And uh, that's about it for the build. 